Allow me to pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time of worship this morning. In this time of worship, please speak to each of us and uh, let us know what you expect of each of us. Thank you as well for allowing us to learn more about your word by opening our hearts through your word, Lord. Thank you for your encouragement and uh, the guidance you provide. Thank you for giving each person who needs uh, what their needs and blessing this time of worship. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. The other day in this uh, hall here, we had a marriage, a wedding, uh, and this, these are the uh, flowers left over from it. And during the wedding, there was a lot of uh, loving feelings happening in this uh, area. And so and if you feel that maybe if you're having a wedding, uh, you need more love, or sorry, if you need more love in your marriage, then pick up some that's left around in this room today. So today's passage is, talk, uh, is talking about people who have lost their love, actually. Um, there was once a man and a woman, and there's a woman asked her husband for a sandwich and orange juice, and so she asked her husband to go get it at a, a, a convenience store nearby. And the husband said, sure, okay, I'll go get what you want, sandwich and orange juice, right? So I'll go get it for you. And so he went to go get it. And the wife said, wait, hold on. You've, oh, you always forget things recently, so you need to take a memo with you. Otherwise, you'll forget what you're supposed to get from me. And the man said, you want sandwich and orange juice, right? I can, believe, I can remember this. So he went to go get it for her. And after even less than 30 seconds, he came back, and he came back with an onigiri and tea for her. And the wife was very disappointed, and she said, I told you I, to take a memo. I wanted you to get me donuts and coffee. So in this case, they were both uh, forgetful. They didn't remember what they were supposed to uh, get. So when you get older, perhaps it's difficult to your, for you to remember things or you get confused. So I have a suggestion for you. In Hebrews 11, uh, we've been going through this actually each week and going over the people of faith in the Old Testament and introducing one person of faith each week. So this is probably pretty uh, easy to remember, right? No? Maybe not. You probably forget about last week what I told you. But today is actually more difficult because today I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of people. So you really need to take notes today. <laughs> Uh, other, you'll, otherwise, you'll just think, oh, today was a good sermon and completely forget what I said. Today's sermon, there'll be a lot of people I'm talking about, so I, I encourage you to take notes. In uh, this letter, the person who wrote it, in Hebrews 11, he introduces uh, various people, and he explains how wonderful each person's faith was. And this is uh, going back from the Genesis um, all the way up through other parts of the Old Testament. But if he, if the writer had tried to talk about all of the people in the Old Testament and all of their faith, it, he realized it would probably be a huge long letter. And so at, he, he just, uh, just summarized all of the rest of the people really quickly so in uh, verse 32 by saying, And what more shall I say? So this means that the people of the Old Testament had wonderful faith, and uh, he had already explained so much about it, so he will just explain the rest uh, quickly. So he gives six names really quickly in a row. And uh, four of these six people are people who are considered to be um, judges. In English, it's referred to as a judge, um, but it's a person who makes a discernment or a judgment about other people. And many years ago, these judges were the leaders that God had assigned to lead over the country. So I will introduce the four people mentioned in verse 32. First is Gideon. In Judges 6 and 7 is where he is introduced. And with three, only 300 soldiers, he was able to conquer one, uh, 135,000 Midianites. 
with just 300 soldiers. And the opponent was 135,000, so there's no way that he should have won. But because of his faith, he was able to conquer against the enemy. The next person mentioned is Barak. He is mentioned in Judges 4 and 5. Barak um, beat the Canaanites. And the soldiers at that time uh, had iron tanks, but um, the, uh, sorry, the enemies had uh, the iron tanks. And according to the Bible, there were 900 of them. So at that time, that would have been uh, the newest type of technology. But Eric Barak was able to um, con uh, to work with other people in order to uh, tackle them. The next person mentioned is Samson, who you may be well aware of. He's um, brought up in Judges 13 through 16. He was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and received amazing power in that way. So he was uh, just extremely strong. And with his own physical strength, he was able to stand up against the Philistines Philist uh, Philistines and uh, gain victory over them. And this, of course, was also through his faith. The other person mentioned, the fourth person, is Jephthith. Jeph Jephthith, his father actually was, uh, actually, his uh, mother was a prostitute, and so he was kind of an invalid uh, child in that uh, aspect, and an outsider in a sense as well. However, God chose him as what to be uh, used for his purposes and to free gain freedom from the Ammonites. So this was also through uh, Jephthah's uh, faith. The next, uh, there were two other people mentioned, David and Samuel. And David was the uh, representative person of Israel as the king. He was um, born as a shepherd boy, actually, but chosen by God to be the leader of Israel. Through his faith, he uh, accepted this uh, um, provision. The other person mentioned is Samuel. He was uh, a, it was a time of uh, lack of prophets and other people of God, but Samuel had strong faith for God and, and is introduced about that at that time. In the book of Hebrews, uh, uh, many other people, the, after these names are mentioned, uh, he did, goes into description as to what exactly they did. If you look at 30, verse 33, it says, who through faith conquered kingdoms. And what this means, uh, as I've just explained before, uh, it explains what the judges did, and uh, David as well uh, conquered a kingdom. The next thing mentioned is uh, administered justice, and this is what uh, David did as a judge. He guided the people and pre performed a correct judgment over them. In Second um, Samuel 8.15, it says, David reigned over all Israel, doing what was just and right for all his people. Also in uh, verse 33, it says, gained what was promised. This refers to uh, Joshua and Caleb as they went to the promised land and they uh, were there to con conquer it. Next in verse 33 is shut the mouths of lions. This is uh, referring to the lions that uh, David was involved with in the story of, Dan sorry, not David, Daniel. And in this is mentioned in Daniel 6. It specifically uh, talks about Daniel. And he, he was actually a foreigner in the land he was in. But he was able to gain a higher positions because of his success. However, the people, um, he was able to gain more and more power of this. But there were people who opposed him. And these other people tried to um, put something over on the king so that they would uh, go against uh, uh, Daniel. So they told him that the, 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 the king should be worshipped as God and that he should make this uh, requirements to the people. 
So the king was kind of stupid, and he went along with it. And he said that uh, for a third period of 30 days, that no one else was to worship anything other than himself. And if that happened, they would be thrown into the lion's den. So he gave his command, but uh, David and David, David was well aware of it. But David, uh, sorry, Daniel <laughs> went back to his home, and he just worshipped as he usually did. Because of this, of course, David's uh, Daniel's. Uh, enemies came to tell on him to the king and uh, explained that the command was broken by Daniel. So the king realized he couldn't go back on his word, and so he threw Daniel into the lion's den. The king was very, very worried about this, obviously, and the next morning he went early to the, Daniel's, uh, to the, the lion's den to see how Daniel was. That uh, is mentioned in Daniel 6.19, and I'll read a bit of that right now. Then at the break of the day, the king rose and went in haste to the den of the lions. When he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then David, Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths, and they have not hurt me, because I was found blameless before them, and also before you, O king, I have done no wrong. So the angels were sent to help Daniel in the lion's den, and they uh, closed the mouths of the lions so Daniel would be safe. So some people say that, you know, maybe the lions just weren't hungry. But if you read the records after this, you can tell that the king uh, was very happy that Daniel was okay. And because of this, he threw all of the opponents of Daniel into the lion's den. The people who fell into the lion's den were uh, killed before they even met, went to the bottom of the pit because the lions were just uh, gra grab biting at them. So it is true that lions were hungry. However, Daniel was saved. After this, the king gave a new command to the country. He said, I make a decree that in my royal dominion men and tremble and fear before the God of the living, uh, the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. His dominion shall, always, shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this is the new command he gave. So Daniel used um, this um, power and was able to be used uh, for the purposes of God under the king. The next mentioning is uh, quenched the fury, fury of the flames. And this is actually mentioned in Daniel as well. It's mentioned of the three young people. They were Daniel's friends by the names of Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. So it's kind it's kind of like a uh, car sounds like Cadillac. <laughs> it's kind of like the names of cars, but anyway. The, at this time, the king uh, was the, by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, and he made a golden statue, and he asked all of the people to worship this golden statue. And if people didn't worship, then they would be thrown into a fiery furnace immediately. However, the people who believed in God, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, refused to do this. So, of course, the king was uh, very angry, and he, they were brought uh, before him. It says that if we were, th and then they said, even if we were thrown into the burning, firing furnace, then our go they said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. But if not... Be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. So they clearly stated this to the king. And then the king was very angry about this. And 
and he hide, heated up the fire seven times hotter than it usually was. So it was extremely hot. He gave this command and he threw the three people into the fire. After a while, he went to look in the furnace and the three people were just uh, walking around in there just fine. And it was actually not three people but four. The king was extremely explain, uh, surprised and he asked them to come out. <laughs> So the three people came out, and it says that their clothes were not um, burnt, and there was no singe on their hair or anything, and they weren't burnt at all. And Nebuchadnezzar, who saw this, uh, commanded the people, he's saying, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is uh, the king of their god is the true god, so that we should all worship this true god. Because only, um, because only a god as such could save them. So the king uh, used these three people in Babylon afterward. This story is mentioned about these, the faith of these three young people, and it shows their victory. The next mentioning is in 30, verse 34, escape the edge of the sword. This refers to, in the Old Testament, the prophets of uh, Elijah and uh, e Elijah as well and uh, tells of their uh, stories with the uh, king and the army. Also, verse 34, weakness was turned into strength. This is referring to uh, the judges, uh, who I just mentioned before, and Ga David as well. And they were not uh, you know, successful to start with, but uh, actually people who st started out in a very weak position they originally would have said, you know, it's impossible for me to do something. You should pick somebody else because I'm not uh, able to do such a task. However, God used these weak people and strengthened them through their faith and was able to use them for his purposes. In verse 35, it, uh, receives, uh, it refers to women receive back their dead, raised to life again. This is... So this is referring to the Old Testament, actually, and the widow of Zarephath as well, when uh, she was uh, revived back to life. The other mentioning was from El Elisha, the woman of Shunem, and there's record of that as well. He, uh, she lost her beloved son, and and was able to have her son um, back, brought back to life through these uh, prophets. So this is a statement of that. In verse 35, it also mentioned that uh, there were others who were tortured, uh, refusing to be released, that they might gain even better resurrection. So if they had given up their faith, they could have been re released, but instead they decided to they ha keep their faith and uh, ch choose to stick with that instead to have a better resur res resurrection because they put more value of that, putting more uh, emphasis on eternal life than this temporary life here on earth. Some people, uh, this actually meaning of this means to be hit like a drum or uh, and die in pain where it says we're, we're tortured in 33. So that would have been the easier choice to just give up their uh, faith, but they chose to stick with their faith instead. In uh, verses 36 through 37, it explains about people who were put to death by stoning, who were sawed in two, and they were killed by the sword uh, as well. These, these are referring to things related to the prophet Jeremiah and how he was uh, faced this uh, hardships. In 37, it uh, re talks about being sold in, sold in two. This is uh, referring to uh, Isaiah. And when Masaya was the king, it is said that he was sold in two. As well, it refers to killed by the sore. This is uh, referring to Prophet uh, Uriah, who was killed by the sword. Also, it explains of uh, 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 people in sheepskins and goatskins. And this is the people of, uh, who lived at these times were wearing this. And they would wear uh, animal skins as clothing. 
and、uh, live in the mountains and、uh, tell about God to many people. In verse 39, It refers to, it says, these were all committed for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. So, what does this mean? Well, it means that the, old peop-、uh, the people in the Old Testament had amazing faith, but they were not able to receive what had been promised to them. What was promised to them was that a Savior would come and that they would see this by, with their own eyes. But in actuality, Jesus Christ came after they had died. Jesus Christ was expected by many people to have come during the Old Testament, but un-、uh, unfortunately, he did not come at that time, so they were not able to see him before they passed away, before they went back to heaven. So that's what it means that they were not able to receive what they had prom- been promised. However, the people who received this、uh, letter were receiving it in the time of the New Testament, and so because it was introduced to the Hebrews, it's reduced to uh, uh, sent to the Christian people. And they realized that the people of the Old Testament、uh, held their faith、uh, to the end, and they realized there was a huge、uh, value on faith, the value of life, actually. Based on this, they realized how important faith was and how they put a large value on their ancestors who had、uh, worked so hard to keep their faith even to the end and in very difficult circumstances. This faith is, also gives hope to people for the future. This is, of course,、uh, because the、uh, Savior is coming. People in the Old Testament、uh, didn't see this, but J- Jesus Christ would come. In verse 40, it says, Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be perfect. What this is referring to is that in the Old Testament, the faith that people had at that time was, of course, wonderful, but in the people living in the New Testament times have even something better. In more detail, what this means is that the Old Testament people were still waiting for the、uh, Savior to come, but the people living in the New Testament、uh, times and thereafter have already seen, in a sense, the Savior. And we have Jesus Christ's words、uh, to listen to, in a sense, through、uh, God's word. So, in that way, we have something much better than the people of the Old Testament. The people of the Old Testament, what they wanted was the, the Messiah to come. And they wanted him to, to you know, reign on the earth in that time. And they believed that they would be able to help、uh, assist him at that time. That's what the kind of faith that they had. We too、uh, are actually still headed toward that status, and we are just in the process of God's plan that is headed in that direction. So, because Jesus has already came and explained about this, we know that this is the process, and in the end,、uh, through Jesus' second coming, then he will come to reign on the earth at that time. The people of the Old Testament,、uh, information they were not aware of, is what we're aware of now. And we are headed toward this,、uh, this same status、uh, that the people of the Old Testament were looking forward to as well. That's what it means to have something better than what they did. So, the words that Jesus talks about、uh, referring to the second coming and、uh, what process of God、uh, bringing this about is mentioned in Matthew 24. It speaks of the end times and what is going to happen. It says in verse 7 Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes. It also says Wickness,、uh, wickedness is multiplied, and most men's will grow, love will grow cold. In old、uh, times of war, it was usually between two countries. But Around the world now, the war- wars that are happening are actually against people and not individual countries, usually. 
in countries alone, there are people fighting against themselves. So, for example, Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan as well. The people of uh, Islam are fighting against each other. Also, so it's like wars against uh, people, people against people is actually the uh, type of wars or fighting that's happening now. Also, it mentions famines and earthquakes. And just month, just like every month, it seems that there are big earthquakes that are happening, and due to the economic, or sorry, the climatic changes, there's many uh, other famines and happening as well. It's uh, you can tell that there's a number of the number of earthquakes is uh, in is getting. <laughs> when I was speaking about earthquakes, they were in the first service this morning. It was actually an earthquake at that time, so everybody was really uh, surprised. <laughs> it, it's prob probably probably won't happen right now, but it did happen uh, in the first service. So Jesus explained that there will be more earthquakes happening. It also explained that wickedness will be multiplied and that most men's love will grow cold. This also uh, explains very well the content of our times today. The countries of America and also in Europe, these are countries that are originally spent a lot of time and effort giving uh, uh, missionaries to other countries uh, in promoting Christianity, but right now that's not the, tr the truth because they're uh, promoting um same-sex marriages and they're denying Christ and so they're actually self-destructing because of that. Also, you may be aware of the Panama Papers uh, leak that's happened recently. This is uh, related to a person by the name of Mosak Fonska and he had a lot of personal information that was uh, given out and it was just one law firm's information but this uh, was spread everywhere, and so it was a very serious problem. The number of I the issues involved was uh, 11 million 500 thousand, and so it's a very big problem. And this involved many people, people who are trying to beat the tax system, would send money to these uh, poor countries and just pay just a little tax there on their money. If they be, to save money, they should have paid it in their own countries, but that would have cost them a fortune. So they tried to avoid this. It's it's not illegal to do this, but it's not appropriate either. You may be aware of this type of uh, things. It's not appropriate. Uh, sorry, it's not illegal, but it's not appropriate. And this is uh, something that a politician should not do. If a politician it says this, then they, it, that's not good, because because the politicians themselves are doing something that's not right. So of course this isn't illegal, but it's not appropriate either. So the person, uh, Iceland Prime Minister, um, he uh, resigned, and also. Uh, there's been mention about the UK uh, Prime Minister and a problem with him as well. Also with um, Putin, uh, President Putin of Russia, and he's also had some uh, political problems with um, $200,000. Uh, there's also an issue with uh, men in China as well. In China, this Panama Papers information is um, doesn't show up actually on the internet there. They've blocked it completely. Jap in Japan, there were actually some people mentioned in, in, in related to this event as well, uh, about 60 trillion yen. That's the known amount. There may be more. But if this money had been uh, paid in taxes in Japan, that would have been a huge amount of money, and it would have been possible for us to not raise the uh, the consumer tax as well and resolved a bunch of other problems as well. So because of this, the, the difference of people who are rich and poor will continue to grow. And this is exactly what Jesus said would happen. This also indicates that God is uh, in the countdown stages of his uh, plan to reach the end of this uh, world here as we know it. 
in God's uh, plan towards the end of the world, what's going to happen next? Are you aware? That's called the rapture. Some people may be hearing this for the first time, but I'll tell you about this. When this happens, the people who on this earth who are Christians, this means the true Christians, the people who truly believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior, these Christians will be picked up uh, and taken to Jesus' uh, place in just an instant and just gone instantly from this world. It, this doesn't matter how much you weigh. <laughs> And so it, you don't have to go on a diet for this. If you have a faith, that's what counts. So when these Christians, uh, when all the Christians uh, disappear from the world, then the people who will just take over, who don't have faith in Christ, and this will be the time of the tribulation period, which will last for seven years. When this ends, Jesus Christ will come back once more. And at that time, we too will come back as well. At that time, when Jesus comes for the second coming, the people of the Old Testament will uh, also come back as well, and we will uh, rule this world together. So the people of the Old Testament and uh, ours as well will um, be together and not be separate. The type of faith that is um, expected of us is explained that we are to waste and to be faithful even to the point of death. And the second thing it mentioned is in Titus 2.13, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are to wait for Jesus. So we need to realize we are in the midst, uh, just a little part of God's great plan, and we are uh, being used in that plan. The people of the Old Testament and their amazing faith and the grace they had is allowing us to be here today. And we are to have the same faith as these people did and go forward through using that faith and to uh, be faithful to the end. Dear God, in the time of the Old Testament, the people who believed in you uh, were believed that you were the true God, and that is uh, evident through your word. Today, we learned about uh, Daniel and other people, and and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and and their faith as well. We know that you are the God of miracles, and you are a strong God, and you have a total control over history and everything. We call you our Father, and we can pray to you because of that. We thank you. We know that in this coming week, you, you as a powerful God will guide us, and we thank you for this. We thank you for your presence of, with us at all times and providing p peace and hope and joy for all of us. Thank you for guiding us in this coming week. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence. And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit be abundant on each and every person this coming week as well. Amen. Amen. That concludes today's worship service today. Thank you very much for coming, and we'll see you next week. This also concludes the English translation. Thank you for listening. Have a great week.